Hello everyone, I am Speranza Walsh and this is Art from the Heart at St. Augustine's Church. And uh, we are still doing our session remotely due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, uh, as a tribute to Black History Month uh, today for this session, we're painting Malcolm X, but um, uh, we are painting it in a different style uh, compared to our previous session. Uh, we're in, um, we painted Martin Luther King Jr. So as a comparison, I can uh, show you the comparison later on. Uh, once we finish the painting uh, Malcolm X. So uh, at first I wanna share a screen with you from a certain website. So I'm sharing the screen. And this is actually uh, what the, I would use as a reference, this image of Malcolm X. Okay, so now we know what the image we're referencing it from. I've actually printed it out and I will guide you based on this. So we will use this printout. And uh, from this, we are going to do first a pencil sketch and then we are going to paint our pencil sketch. Mm -hmm. And then um, we are going to paint the lines using a flat brush. So please have a flat brush ready as well as our favorite round brush. Hope okay, I wait, <laughs> sorry, the tip is um, a bit deformed. So uh, for this session, we are going to use uh, these two brushes. So for the per first part of painting, we will use mostly the round brush. And in the latter part, once we're almost finished, we will use the flat brush. Okay, let's start. Since this um, was used in our previous uh, class uh, uh, with the kids uh, earlier, okay, there are already lines in this image, but I would walk you through on how we came about these lines. Now, the first part would be, let me use a different set of colors to draw the shape of an egg. So I have the shape of an egg this is the first bit that we're using. So we now have this pink egg. And after we've drawn that uh, shape of an egg, we then divide the egg in the middle, like so, with a vertical line. I'm using broken lines, well, roughly in the middle, so that we know uh, which part of its face uh, is positioned where. And then I'm gonna do something similar. I'm going to divide uh, the lower part and the upper part in the middle. And by that, I would divide it based on the intersection of this part of the egg shape and this part of the egg shape. So roughly, I have this line here, which intersects uh, one of his eyes almost centrally, which is a good thing that makes things easier for us uh, to estimate the dimension uh, positioning and uh, similar. Next, um, we will start uh, with this part of the face. So remember, here's an intersection and here's another intersection. Now what I'm gonna do is divide this point of the center with this point based on the image I see. So I'm going to draw my guideline here. Okay, I've drawn my guideline. And now I am going to use my um, green uh, marker. So I am going to draw a slightly slanted line here, which I will, okay, here, slightly sl slanted. And I say it's slightly slanted because if I, let's say, uh, take this, okay, and then I have, uh, let's say this is my reference, or this is my reference. If I bring this down, as you can see, if I begin here, I don't end here. So it's slightly slanted like so. So higher here and lower here, but the difference is not that big. So slightly slanted. And once I hit this line, this intersection, I curve upwards and connect it to the other intersection here. So hit the line. Okay, 
and then I curve upwards and that would be that part of his face. And then on the other side, what I will be doing now would be to continue this line. So remember this slightly slanted. So I continue with that same uh, line. And then similarly halfway through, I curve back up but not as sharp as at this point. So about a pencil thick from uh, the intersection here. So a, a little bit bigger than a pencil thick. So I go up, there we go. Again, about another pencil thick. I draw a parallel line. I'm using a broken line here, broken line here. So I have that line for the ear. To draw the ear, okay, from this intersection, I draw a curve and then I want that curve to um, go and meet this other uh, intersection. So curve, then a straight line and I let it meet that intersection. That will be the upper part of the ear, okay? And then here, okay, for this one, Okay, this is the intersection between the original uh, egg shape and this is the intersection between um, this line and the horizontal guideline. So I just divide that in the middle, okay, and then draw another guideline. So from there, okay, I connect this with the curve. So like so and that's actually my ear now so i'm not sure if you can see it clearly i should probably use another color to represent the whole ear because here it's broken down into several parts one two three so let me just get another color so i can represent it properly i'm just drawing over all of it so like so and that is now ear. Now for parts of the ear, okay, what I see would be from this point, again the intersection, just squiggly line going down, and here from the middle, slanted line going up until you hit that squiggly line, and that's our ear. The more, most important bit about the ear is the outer part, because it's like a silhouette uh, showing the shape of um, his ear. Now, the next bit would be to uh, draw his lips, okay, and the eyes, and of course the glasses. Okay, and then we'll do uh, his shirt, neck shirt, and all of that. And you can just estimate that. Actually, you can just estimate all of this. But what's important, because this has to be identifiable as Malcolm X, would be uh, the basic features that he has. So among those basic features would be his nose, um, his lips, his eyes, his ears, and here also his glasses, because he wears this thick framed glasses here, connected by this metal uh, strip. And then here, it's like a frameless uh, set of glasses. So this part is actually thinner than the upper bit. So let's um, do his lips. So here from the intersection, okay, as you may have noticed, okay, we draw the tip of the lips, slant down, and then slant up. And here, from where we intersected here, we just draw a slanted line, curved line, uh, going to the original egg shape. And here, similarly, we do the same until we reach um, the vertical guideline and we go a little bit in excess of that guideline and please be mindful that this is supposed to be lower than this area so we connect that and then we draw the lips and there we go and it's similar with the nose and the eyes <clears throat> okay in this case i actually have done the nose first and as i told my students previously it's like three squiggly lines the first squiggle would be this one 
the next one would be this, and the next one would be this. So those are my three squiggly lines. Yes. And then the next bit would be the eyes. So from the nose, I draw this bit, just small. Based on this photograph, it is small. I won't be drawing the details now. They will come later. I won't be drawing the hair. That would also be later when we paint it. And then here the neck, it will be a parallel line to this, but not uh, lower than the chin, okay? By the way, uh, please be mindful of the shape of his chin, okay? There's this um, curvature here. So, like so. So, his uh, chin has that uh, bit. And then uh, after this line, okay, we go just a little bit down, curve in, okay. And then we'll just draw it like so. And it doesn't have to be exact because as I mentioned uh, previously, I'm not sure if it was in this session, this will be a very stylized design. Okay, so for this very stylized design, the first thing we are going to do is to paint uh, the sketch. So I've done the sketch uh, ahead of time. And okay, the first thing we're going to do now when we paint it would be to get our round brush. Let me just find the round brush. No, it's not just any round brush, it's my favorite round brush. So if we can't find it, we'll use my second favorite round brush. Okay, which would be this one. First thing you have to do is wet the round brush. And the first color I'm using is yellow ochre. And I'm just dropping in colors here, just like so. And I'm just coloring the central part of his face. Glued his lips. So again, this is yellow ochre. You can use another color since it's a very stylized um, design. So you can actually experiment and use other colors. But the thing is the first one should be the lightest so that when we put the next coat, which is darker, we can still see uh, the first coat. We can uh, leave the area, some areas lighter. Okay, now the next bit would be uh, burnt sienna. So for burnt sienna, okay, I will just, um, as I said, I will leave some of it. Okay, you can, uh, Please feel free to go beyond the sketch. Again, as I mentioned, this is very stylized. This is going to be a lot different than what we are used to. But that makes it exciting. It's a completely new adventure. Okay, so now, I think we're forgetting something. The neck should be the same color as uh, the face because it's also part of the body. So I am going to put some yellow ochre over here. And also the ear, we forgot about the ear. So there we go. Okay, again, a little bit of uh, burnt sienna. Let me turn it around. Okay, looks good. Uh, a little bit more burnt sienna in this area. 
and its nose, under the eye. Oh, fantastic. We are doing pretty well. Okay, next thing would be burnt umber. Yes, it's becoming darker. So here, I'll do the neck first. Yes, and if you go over, that's fine. And then also here in the ear. Okay. And then um, here on the face. here part of the neck and uh, on this part as well so around the eyes actually his upper lip is darker Okay, like so. And around the eyes. And now while we're waiting for this to dry, okay, we'll paint the shirt. Oh, I think I forgot something. I forgot the nose. Just paint around the nose. And half of it would be darker as well because of the shadow. Okay, now it's time for the shirt. So we'll choose a nice color probably. Let's choose orange this time. Just light. So we're painting it with a light orange. So that means if it's light there, it should be light here. This is still part of the shirt. And this is still part of the shirt. I think I put too much water, so I have to lift it. Okay, I need my kitchen towel. Okay. And I need a nice color for my tie. So I'm going to make it sort of blue to contrast with the shirt. Um, this jacket, I want to make it, uh, should I make it formal, like charcoal gray or light gray or something? Okay, let's do that. Okay, let's do that. Okay. So now we've painted the jacket. Now I want a little bit of background here. So I'm just going to wet this area right here as well, just to spread the paint. So I'm just going to do that like so. Again, this is a completely different style of uh, painting Malcolm X. Not your traditional portrait. Okay, so now I will use gray and paint some areas gray, okay? So those areas I would consider to be gray would be like this part of his hair. Okay. And then here, which later on can transition to a darker one. Also, um,
Hmm. Probably I need it to be darker here as well. Yeah, like so. Okay, so now I am ready to use black. Okay, and then um, we need the really concentrated uh, black paint here. So it's going to be dark. And this will be for his hair. So, and if you go over, that's fine. Again, as I said, this is quite different from what we usually do. And yes, we are definitely going over. Okay, here. This is actually just a shadow, this part. Okay, now here. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so now I'm going to paint the eyes. Okay, and then here, some parts of the nose. And now, do I need any shadow? Yes, I do need some here, here and here. And that's it. We now just have to let it dry. And then once it's dry, we will use our flat brush. Okay, it has dried a little bit, but not uh, too dry, but uh, it's already workable. So let's continue. So now I'm just getting my flat brush with black paint on it. So we will start here. Okay, I will start with this straight area here. And then this one. And the uh, at this point, you might start to understand what I was trying to say earlier about using the flat brush in this case. So we're actually painting over the outline, but we're using lines to do it. And that is uh, what I mean by it being really stylized. So we painted that, now we painted this. And it's okay to go over to see the end of the line. And that is because it's really stylized. And that is the style that we want to see. It's the lines. Of course, even uh, with this stylized, hair stylized technique, we still want to uh, see that this is Malcolm X. So that means the details uh, particular to him should still uh, be uh, represented in this image. Like for example, the glasses, the shape of his lips, um, the shape of his nose, his ears. It's mostly just shapes.
and as you can see here I'm really using uh, really sharp lines because that's how we are uh, doing the stylization process for this particular art piece. And there can be spaces in between as well. And later on, I'm going to lift some of the paint so you can see what I mean. So here, I'm just uh, painting these lines here that we, we couldn't really see clearly. But there are lines there, which also adds to the um, view of this area. So it makes it darker. And so now we have that, that, and that. Since it's still a little bit wet, that spread a bit, but that's okay. Now we go to the glasses, which is very important because this is uh, so Malcolm X, this type of glasses. To, to make the corners of the lens look a bit curved so we add another line shorter line so here parallel and then I would uh, add shorter lines there and now this is the interesting bit so here these glasses are thick so I'm going to use uh, my brush and uh, create the thicker stroke of paint there we go and here as well and here but the okay okay So here I'm going to make this solid. Yeah, and this one as well. I'm going to do the line first. And then I found that I made that solid. And next would be this bit over here goes behind the ear let me see how he looks looking much better closer to um, the actual uh, Malcolm X um, so we have to add some details so details would just be in terms of lines like so And then, uh, of course, here as well, below the uh, lips, of course. And then um, his eyebrows, of course. Which would also be Made up of lines and yes, this bit again, more lines. Let me just turn it around. Okay, now we just continue to add details, so we just keep on adding the details, but only in strokes uh, like uh, what I've just done. And now for the head, 
I did say that in some areas we may need to lift the, the paint. So here in the darker area, since you can't see black on black, we have to lift the paint like so. So that becomes a lighter area instead. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, we just continue uh, putting those lines on. Okay, like here as well, here. Um, also here. And then uh, once we put all those lines uh, in, we should have an end product that is something like this. Okay. This is what we actually did in class. So this is our version of Malcolm X uh, in this particular style. So it's just paint um, gathered uh, depending on the lighting and then the, de the details are actually added uh, later on. Now, what we did uh, previously uh, for Martin Luther King and was different. Uh, this one is a more realistic um, drawing. And this one is really stylized because as you can see here, these are all within the lines and uh, the shading uh, are all smooth and uh, some of the gradients are just made to mix gradually to create that more natural look compared to this one, which you can see would really be made of lines. And uh, especially here in the area where we have hair. So this is our version of uh, Malcolm X. And in the coming session, we will be doing Rosa Parks, but uh, you know, again, in a different style. We will be doing it uh, more of a mixture type um, uh, presentation. And uh, I hope you all have fun doing it and learn uh, of um, their contribution, this people's contribution to our society and how they made our society better. Okay, well, that is it for now. And see you again in the next session. Bye-bye. <laughs>